this is a quick little video about um, some saw horses I made for our riding lawnmower. Uh, you know, this thing constantly needs to go up in the air, whether it's a loose belt or in this case, I busted a spring on the, uh, on the foot pedal for the gas brake control, forward reverse control, excuse me. And so I came up with this sawhorse idea and I'm going to post it online, including plans for anyone that, you know, wants to modify it or make a similar one. Um, I'll just show the saw horses in this part of the video and how they're attached and then I'll post the CAD plans and, and some screenshots of that too. Uh, you can see here I just bought a 5 8 um, pin with some holes in it from Ace or Hubbard's. Got some washers. It fits really tight so it can't fall off the saw horse. Uh, you'll notice how it's in in the center. It's because if you try to use normal saw horses like the one up front, they hit on the tires because the tires stick out to the ends of the vehicle. So um, I did this and made this so it sits right on the back here. I'm sure you could modify this for another vehicle. Uh, this one happens to be 32 inches off the ground. And then what I did for the front, instead of making a custom sawhorse, I just made a sawhorse extension and it slips over these uh, sawhorses I made. If you've got sawhorses that are um, made out of 2 by material, you just make a different thickness. Um, because the BCIs are, I think, 2 and an eighth or whatever, I know they're inch and 3 quarters, I had to add this little piece here. But other than that, they'll, the plans will be the same. And you can see what I did. Um, I machined these really crappily, but you could also just use a, a cutoff wheel to make that little fork. But the fork slips over that bolt like a dropout. And it works great. Um, so the, it keeps the tires clear if I need to work on the front suspension. Or if for some crazy reason I need to engage the tranny, the back tires are clear. And there's nothing underneath it, you know, to, su to support it underneath, which means that um, I can lay under it if I need to. Drop the, drop the um, blades down if I need to. It's not going to hit on anything underneath. And uh, the way I did this sawhorse in the back, I'll come back around this side. The front is completely vertical and the back legs are tilted um, and the bolt is back from center by quite a bit so it puts the weight over you know past the roll centers past those front feet center of gravity that's what I'm trying to say um, the cuts for this back one were fairly complicated so if you're gonna do this you'll definitely wanna check everything twice I think one of the back legs I cut three times and still didn't quite get it right because the joinery is kind of complicated. You can see where I miscut the foot there because you got rights and lefts and I was being lazy and only put the put one side on my CAD plans. I didn't put right and left. I just uh, did a right side and then and then uh, just reversed everything for the left. Um, so I think I'll actually throw a left hand version on the CAD plans before I post them. Anyways, this is just a little blurb about how to make a set of sawhorses for your riding lawnmower. Uh, feel free to modify the plans as you need to. Thanks. Here you can kind of see some of the sketching I did um, before I actually started the project. So we're kind of going in reverse here, but basically this is kind of typical of what I'll do before a simple project to just kind of get an idea of what I want it to look like, sketch it out real quick. Obviously I'm not the best artist, but you know, um, as a draftsman for me, it's all about production. It's not so much about, uh, how well I can draw. Um, so yeah, this is just a super quick sketch of what the conditions were out there at the lawnmower and, and basically what I wanted to, uh, um, wanted to get down on paper for CAD and so then we'll switch over to the CAD here in just a sec. Alright so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna o open the uh, CAD file, it's already done, both of them are, um, and just kinda go through them real quick. Um, we'll go with the front stand first. 
and this one's pretty simple so I'll actually open the CAD file um, basically all this is is a portion of 2x6 and that portion is wide enough at uh, 13 and 5 8 for these forks to just slip over those um, bolts that I showed you outside and at first I had the aluminum pieces that you see sticking straight up um, but if I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the um, uh, phone recorded portion of the video but they were hitting little metal rivets just below them so originally I had a hole here where the cursor is I just pulled that screw out and then rotated them back till this edge was lined up right here and then poke the screws back in and it tilted the these aluminum pieces far enough back to clear that lower that lower portion that was hitting um, and it ended up making it actually a little more stable because it put the sawhorse out in front gave it a little bit wider base and of course it's not these aren't far enough back for the center of gravity to move past the sawhorse feet so this one's pretty simple went down to uh, Hubbard's Ace Hardware what do you want whatever you want to call it uh, this material is uh, inch by quarter aluminum I have a little milling machine I use but like I said in the other video you could just use a cutoff wheel to make these slots and just use a regular drill um, and then the, <clears throat> excuse me, this slips over the sawhorse. It's, these are two by fours. This is a two by six. So I will post the plans um, on GrabCAD and you'll be able to click on the link after or below the video. Um, so this one's pretty simple. Uh, just got part call outs, materials, cut sheet. This is a um, single part file and it's done with um, weldments. I prefer those. I, if at any time that I don't have to use an assembly file and make crap together and have extra files floating around, I'm all for it. I'm one of the, th I have probably 50 customers and the last thing I need is hundreds of files floating around everywhere and so Anytime I get a chance to consolidate a simple part like this into one file that's a multi-body part, I'm just fine with that. Uh, you may be a real big fan of uh, assemblies. I'm not. I think it takes extra time to mate them and do all that stuff. Now, if you have moving parts, I completely understand. Mates are great for things that move. But if you've got a static component, I'm all about uh, multi-body parts. So... Um, that's that for the front stand. I'll go ahead and close that out and open the rear stand. The rear stand was a bit more complicated as far as cuts. I had these unnecessary cuts right here in this uh, underneath where the feet are. Uh, looking back, I probably would have... Well, when I screwed it together, this did provide a, a spot for me to be able to check my cuts and allowed me to make sure that they were each six inches and that they fit together right and I, I did have some cuts that were a little bit off but you know I was out there cutting with a uh, a um, skill saw and so a lot of it's you know for lack of a better word eyeball I did a lot of measure I did a lot of uh, layout with a pen and straight edge and and a bunch of numbers so uh, you know you'll do what works best for you but so this is the st the rear stand and uh, then I broke out the individual components and you'll see on the screen here the reason that these are sitting here is these are linked to the cut list and then what I do is in a note I link the balloon to the note so that the balloon the note automatically updates the part and the material type. Um, I wish SolidWorks had something nicer. Normally when you're doing steel layout these look different. They got a double line under them. A lot of times they'll say what scale they are. I would um, justify this 2x6 text down at the bottom. And So as far as formatting goes uh, you know I'm, I, I have an AutoCAD background and 
my complaint, you know, I don't, I really could care less about ISO or ANSI standards. Uh, I'm, I'm paid to please my boss. And generally there are formatting standards that they use in, let's say, the um, chemical plant industry or steel construction industry, and they don't look like this. The notes below each individual component don't look like that. So I wish SolidWorks would pull their head out of their, their rear end and uh, get some of that stuff fixed. You know, I've talked to my uh, reseller about it. Who knows if it'll ever happen, they're French. So, um, anyways, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I know a lot of guys struggle with how to break these individual parts out. It's pretty easy under view layout. You've got this relative view. When you click on that, it'll bring you to your multi-body part. And uh, I'll just do it real quick. Right here, you just want to do selected bodies. And you can select an individual body. And then you can tell it what orientation you want it to be in. So for you guys who, are, who have wanted to do that before and don't know how, that's how you do it. Uh, anyways, other than that, I will post the files online. Thanks for watching.